Hey ho, it's Virginia, Virginia Chen from Humid with the Chance of Fish Bowls. And today we're going to be explaining about the symbolisms and the frequently seen objects during Chinese New Year's. So let's go! Now as a friendly aside, if you haven't watched the timeline of Chinese New Year's, go and check out that video as well because it will give you more clarity on the different events that happen during Chinese New Year's in Hong Kong. Every city and every village or every family will celebrate Chinese New Year's or Lunar New Year's slightly different. If you have something different to us, go ahead and leave a comment below so we can all learn from one another. In this video, I'll share some common themes like plants, but in subsequent videos, I'll delve further into that subject matter. The ultimate goal of this video is for you to get a little bit more insight and for you to understand when you walk around and be like, oh, I know why this is here now. Oh, I get it. If you see an object around and you're wondering, I wonder what this is for, your best guess would be that it's for good luck, good wealth, good fortune, and good health. A lot of the symbolism will come from the sound of the word. So people in Hong Kong love a good pun. Something that sounds like something is usually why we eat something or why something is auspicious. The general color of choice is the color red. If it wasn't obvious enough in my decor. They love red, they love orange, they love yellow. And the reason why they love yellow is because yellow looks like gold. Anything that's colorful is way better than say like an all black outfit. Loudness is at an all-time high. We like things super atmospheric or vibrant, but also as well, you hear a lot of gongs and drums and firecrackers, and supposedly loud noises will drive away the evil spirits. <laughs> Foods of choice. This might be a really long one, but I think you can divide it into Things that you can find in your candy box, which is what we also call a chutin hap or a complete box. It just means that you have everything complete and needed for the New Year's. Inside, we will put in snacks and candies and sweets. We have a video on the candies that are seen in your complete box. We can also look at the meal that you eat during Chinese New Year's Eve, that really big dinner and all of the dishes there. The fish is seen because it signifies abundance or overabundance of things. The word for fish in Cantonese is yu and then overabundance or abundance of is yu. A Chinese New Year saying li min yao yu, which means like you will have an overabundance of. Now, typically you would see the fish in your Chinese New Year's Eve dinner table. Each dish will signify something and you also want the dinner to be quite bountiful so it symbolizes that your new year is going to be in abundance of everything that you need. Now one example for the Chinese New Year's Eve dinner dish would be something called fa choi ho si. Sounds like fa choi ho si which means wealth and prosperity good thing. What's in this dish is basically fa choi black moss and ho si which is dried oysters. And then lastly, there's a category for like Chinese related uh, snack foods that you can't fit in the candy box. Fried foods look golden brown. Golden is a really good color. So we like to eat a lot of golden snacks. Ferrero Rocher in Chinese is gam sa and that literally translates to gold sand. So it looks like nuggets of gold and it has a really good name. Cakes goes are popular as well, but they're different to the cakes that you're thinking of. Our cakes are more like rice cakes, turnip cakes, which are savory or water chestnut cakes. These cakes are goes. Go also sounds like tall or high. There's a Chinese saying that is bo bo go saying. So if you eat these cakes, it just means that you will have higher and higher progression in your life. Candy fruits and vegetables are also quite common as they all have auspicious names and they all have a symbolism for something or another. And also sweet means like your new year is going to be sweet as well. And then lastly, I think the fruit that's really popular during Chinese New Year's is the guts. This is what you would call a mandarin, a tangerine, an orange, or a kamquat. But in Chinese, we call it a gut. And why a gut is lucky is because in Chinese, something that's auspicious is called gut chen. So that gut and this gut sound similar. Also, it looks lucky. It's bright orange. It looks like a nugget of gold. Circles are good as symbolism because there's no beginning or end. It's very wholesome. 
All right, let's address these red pockets. So I have already talked about the red pockets during the timeline of Chinese New Year's, but red pockets are also called red packets or they're called lucky envelopes or we call them lai zi in Chinese that we put money inside of these lucky envelopes and people give them out. In order to get a lucky envelope, you have to do something called bai lin. Bai lin means that you exchange Chinese New Year's lucky sayings to one another. And so we have another video on all the bai lin phrases that you can use. Actually, I'm missing like a really popular decoration, which is the fai chun, which are red pieces of paper with lucky uh, characters and Chinese sayings on them. Once again, the color of choice is the same. It's gonna be the red, orange, yellow, and gold. Any lucky items that we've already talked about in real life can also be found in plush form. Firecrackers, tangerine pots, orange pots, peach blossom trees, gold ingots, which we call yun bo. Also the Chinese zodiac animal that reps for that year, like the ambassador. So in 2022, it is the year of the tiger. Say for example, this guy, he's the god of wealth, but maybe someone will have a decoration with the tiger in it as well. There will be lots of fai chuns and door couplets. So fai chuns are once again, either rectangle or square pieces of red paper, and they will either have black ink or gold ink on them. I would say that it's more frequently seen in like commercial decorations. I think lanterns are more for like hanging outside. And like I say, I don't have a balcony, a patio, and I live in an apartment. So therefore I don't usually buy lanterns unless they're like really tiny ones like this. There are specific Chinese New Year flowers and plants that come out during this time. This is a money plant, so it's supposed to give you wealth and money and prosperity for the new year. But we will have a specific video that delves into more detail on the plants and the flowers of Chinese New Year's. Flowers have um, a saying, fa hui fu guai, which means that when the flower booms, so does your fortune. So you want to buy flowers where they bloom into the new year. You don't want them to bloom before the year. Then we have the candy box, which is what we call the complete box. This is a complete box. It would be located on a dining room table or a kitchen table somewhere for guests. In terms of gods, I think that the god of wealth is very, very popular. He is called Choi San. He's often seen holding a gold ingot, which is what we call a yun bo. Then I also found the kitchen god, which you give offerings to on the 23rd day of the 12th lunar month. And then also another one is door god. So the door gods are the gods that protect the doors. The Chinese zodiac animals are gonna be pretty popular. There's 12 of them, but the one that's specifically for that year. Tony the Tiger is super popular this year. This is Mochino's Chinese New Year collection. Other animals that you will see will be the line for the line dances, then there perhaps might be dragon dances as well. And then there's another mythical creature called the Keilun. His dances are usually only seen within the villages. You can tell them apart because the Keilun will have like a horn, just one on the top. So it's said to be like the Chinese unicorn. Frequently seen during lion dances, dragon dances is lettuce. And the reason why is because lettuce in Cantonese is sang choy, but it also sounds like grow wealth. So that's why they always eat the lettuce because then you want them to grow wealth during the new year. So those are what I think are the commonly seen objects in Hong Kong during Chinese New Year's. I could leave this video here, but also felt like at the same time, it's only right that while we talk about symbolisms of Chinese New Year's, that we also talk about the don't do's, like the taboos or don't do this faux pas type of deal. Here are now my list of taboo things that you should not do during Chinese New Year's. Don't cut your hair. Uh, your hair is called tao fat. Wealth and prosperity is fat. They sound very similar to one another. If you cut your hair, it essentially symbolizes that you're cutting your luck. So people generally do not cut their hair during the entire first month of Chinese New Year's. Number two, don't take out garbage on the first day of Chinese New Year's. And the reason why is because you've spent all this time trying to get good luck. You've already cleansed yourself with pomelo leaves from the night before. If you take out garbage, it's symbolic of you throwing out your luck. Number three, Similar to the second point, don't clean on the first day of Chinese New Year's. No cleaning, no sweeping, no vacuuming, nothing like that. 
cleaning is symbolic of basically just cleaning out or throwing out good luck out the door. Number four. Sure, you might be sarcastic or cynical and you might make jokes like, not over my dead body, right? But refrain from saying any of those things, especially in the presence of elders. Taboo number five, try not to break anything if you can. If you do break something, what we like to say is which means that once it hits the floor, it becomes a flower and flowers bloom and so does your fortune. And those are all the taboos I have for you. So yes, I did go back and do some research. Don't take medicine on the first day as it symbolizes ill health for the rest of the year. Don't eat porridge on the first day or else you'll be poor for the rest of the year. Don't buy new shoes for the first month. Shoes are pronounced high. High high sang means that you're sighing a lot. Don't do needlework on the first day as it symbolizes you'll have a hard rest of the year. Don't cry or else that be symbolic of a sad or hard year. If I've missed any that your mom or your dad keeps harping you about, please let us know in the comments below. And there are so many more videos in this Chinese New Year series, so don't forget to check out that entire playlist. Please don't forget to comment, subscribe, and like. And hey, don't forget, what's the weather like in Hong Kong? Well, it's humid with a chance of fish balls. Till next time, jagin. I have these tucked under my armpit. It's also very, very hot. Um, let's just leave them.